everyone. It's Ian Nicholas back with another episode of Zoomed In. Today I'm joined by one of the best athletes to come out of Connecticut in years, a graduate of New Canaan High School and a former Boston College football star, Zach Allen. He's the first player in New Canaan football history to be drafted into the NFL, and now he looks to add to his resume in year three with the Arizona Cardinals. Zach, how's that offseason treating you? It's been great. Thanks for having me. No problem. So let's rewind a little bit to 2011. It's a story that's circulated around, but definitely one that really could have changed your career trajectory before you won state championships as a member of the football team or were named Gatorade Player of the Year in Connecticut. Coach Lou Marinelli, who's still kicking it, doing his thing with the New Canaan High School program, has mentioned that you almost chose baseball over football and that you were kind of getting a little bit bored of football, which, you know, you'd played throughout the entirety of youth. And, you know, that happens to athletes sometimes. Tell me a little bit about how you refound your passion for the game of football during those underclassmen years at NCHS and who were some of the coaches, players, you know, overall who helped you get back into the game that you now play professional. Yeah, I think the big thing for me was, um, you know, I always loved football. It was just, you know, because, I mean, Connecticut doesn't have, you know, as many athletes and as many big kids. So whenever you're a big guy, even if you are one of the more athletic guys, you're always put on the offensive line, and I hated it. So um, yeah, I made the decision with my dad. You know, I just – I like baseball a lot. That was really my first love was baseball. And then, um, you know, we – Tried to, I tried to tell Coach Marinelli, but he always loves to tell the story of how he convinced me and everything. And it was more like I was told I was playing football than it was a consensual decision. But I'm very glad it happened. Um, you know, he's obviously been a big influence in my life. Um, but, you know, I had a lot of great coaches, Coach Kurtz, Coach Miska, um, Coach Silvestri. I mean, I could go through everybody. And then, you know, obviously all my teammates, you know, I, I always love playing with them. Like you grow up playing with them since, you know, for me it was fourth grade. So um, it was, you know, I'm definitely glad I made the decision. And, you know, I had a blast, um, you know, after, um, you know, playing linebacker at uh, New Canaan. And, you know, luckily it's taken me here. It's a lot more fun to get after the quarterback and trying to protect it. I know what you mean. And gosh, I remember Coach Kurtz on that freshman team. That was a ride. Yeah. But definitely, <laughs> definitely a great run that you had. And obviously 2014 Gatorade Player of the Year in the power of social media. There's a story that said you found out through the world of Twitter on your way to physics class. First of all, were you on the way to Jeff Haig's class when you heard that news? No, I was, uh, I was always with Mr. Barone. I had him like it seemed every single year. So, um no, nah, he was the best. I know he retired, and I hope he does doing well in Virginia. But he he was awesome. But yeah, no, I uh, I literally was, you know, I was just walking the class. I saw on Twitter, and then we go out to practice, and you know, Coach Marinelli wanted to make a big surprise, but it was kind of the whole news was out there. So yep, um, but it was still cool to find out that way. Definitely. And how did it just feel to know that you kind of made the right decision, although you were kind of forced back into playing football? Coach Marinelli, we know he's relentless, but that why he's successful. But how did it feel to kind of be validated and know maybe I did make the right decision to continue playing football and it's really paying off for me? I think I really knew um, when I decided to play again, you know, that sophomore year, mm -hmm. um, how much fun I was having. Um, you know, again, I wasn't playing offensive line and. Um, you know, I think Coach Marinelli, you know, that's that was the first time playing for him really on varsity. So you realize just kind of how special the program is. And I was very fortunate, um, you know, to be there. And that's really kind of what, you know, helped me love it. And I know some guys when, you know, you're practicing in December for playoffs and stuff are like, oh, it's cold. I hate this. It's, you know, six, seven o'clock at night. I mean, I just I loved it. I loved the grind. I loved all everything about it. So I knew it was the right decision. And then, you know, everything after that was just kind of icing on the cake, you know, the, the college and, uh, um, you know, the accolades and stuff like that. So Exactly. And, you know, whenever you can make, you know, the preparation and the work not seem like work, then you know you're doing something right. So I know football players are visual learners. There's a lot of film involved. So I'm going to bring you through a visual here. This is where you were in 2014. You know, where you are, Dunning sidelines, there's Lucas Niang, you might have heard of him, the Kansas City Chief, you guys drafted in back-to-back -back years. And I know you've been talked, probably been asked about it a lot, but here's where this guy was in 2014. You know, <laughs> your new teammate with the Cardinals, the unanimous defensive player of the year, J.J. Watt. And speaking of Twitter, you're one of the 578 humans that J.J. Watt follows on Twitter, so you've joined an elite club there. Tell me about now, you know, this is a guy you probably grew up watching here in New Canaan, dominating with the Houston Texans. 
And now you're going to be playing across the line of scrimmage from him. Have you talked to JJ? Has he talked to you? What do you feel that you're going to be playing next to this dominant guy? And you're going to be joining him and Chandler Jones, who, you know, is a pretty good guy too. And a close teammate of yours, I could assume. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm just like the luckiest guy in the league because I get to learn from basically two hall of famers um, with Chan. And now I get to learn from JJ, but uh, it's been great. I mean, when he came in um, right away, you definitely kind of sensed an energy change and, um, you know, he texted me and we were just talking about, you know, what we want to do this off season, how to get ready for the season. And um, I mean, I just, just the energy that he brings, you know, he just makes everybody want to work even harder. Um, and I've just, you know, I, I've said it before, uh, you know, like you said, like I grew in a high school, all the interviews, I'm like, oh, you know, J.J. Watts, like, you know, the guy, My idol. Play, like, yeah, everything like that. And now you get to play with him. It's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool feeling. So, um, yeah, I'm just really super excited to learn as much as I can from him and to play with him. And, um, you know, it's just that definitely when you have that many good players up front, it's going to be a lot of fun this year. It definitely will, but you guys hopefully will be wrecking havoc in the NFC West. It's going to be crazy and awesome division that is. And he got his career off to a phenomenal start in Houston, and you had your career going off to a really good start in Arizona. You were a week one starter. Coach Kingsbury was a big fan of your game, but no career is perfect. Injuries are bound to happen, and you had a bit of a neck problem that kind of derailed your number one. Tell me a little bit about that time, how you worked through it, and how you were feeling knowing that you couldn't show the people at home and the people of Arizona all the hard work that you would put in knowing that it was really out of your control. Yeah, it was kind of a freak thing because, you know, that was the first time I ever missed, like, time at any level, whether it was high school, even youth, you know, college. I played every game, basically. So, um, you know, it definitely was scary. And then, you know, I mean, just going to the doctor's visits, we did, you know, all the treatments, all the shots, all the everything. Um, to try and heal it and they just said you know it's you know you won't know until you you know you really start hitting on it um, and that's why this past camp you know was definitely a big uh, you know a big test definitely you know because you train so hard in the off season to try and get your neck ready just everything ready and you don't want it all to be thrown away um, so the fact that you know when I started hitting again this year and it started feeling great back to normal that definitely gave me confidence and you know let me just play football again but um, you know, it definitely makes you appreciate everything once it's taken away from you mm-hmm. for a little bit of time. And, you know, luckily it wasn't more serious, but, um, you know, I'm just, you know, knock on wood, you know, just stay, stay healthy the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're, we're pulling for you to stay and play all 16 games this year. Wait, hold on. 17 games this year. Things are changing with you in the league now, you know, expanded playoffs, all that good stuff. And speaking of, you know, taking things away from you, COVID happened. You guys were luckily able to have your season even though it was, I bet, a little bit hectic. But you made your presence felt week one. And I know individual stats are not always the most important thing to a team's success. But in week one, you play the 49ers, you won, and you had a sack on Jimmy Garoppolo. And, you know, be honest, how did you feel knowing that you were back on the field making really your first highlight real play as an NFL player? Yeah, I mean, that definitely kind of, you know, gave you a little bit of confidence knowing that you belong in the league because, again, you know, the whole rookie year, I mean, the first three games were basically a learning curve, mm-hmm. um, you know, just kind of getting thrown in the fire. And then, you know, obviously the injury happens and, you know, you're just – you're watching everybody, but you don't know, can you do it? You see guys that, you know, in college that you think you're better than, they're doing it. You're like, okay, maybe I can. And then guys that you were like, wow, that's a good player. They're struggling. Maybe, you know, it's all up in the air. So – um, finally doing that. And then I think the big thing too, like you said, I mean, we won that game. That was San Fran. That was the yep. first game after the Super Bowl. And, you know, I know they had a down year, but I, that was when they were fully healthy and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of revamped. So, um, you know, that was a big win for us and kind of set off, you know, excitement, you know, not just, you know, individually, but with the whole team. So, um, you know, I think the fact that this year we proved that, you know, we can beat the best of the best. We just need to be more consistent um, is a big thing for us. And, um, you know, it's definitely something that we're preaching and we're working on being more disciplined and consistent. The team definitely took a huge leap from year one to year two. You guys got off to a phenomenal start to the year and adding more pieces like JJ and getting guys back from injury. I bet you guys are going to be in a great spot this year. And going back a little bit further to your rookie season again, or really whenever it might have happened, you hear the typical – welcome to the NFL moment. Did you ever have a moment where you realized I'm not playing in the FCAC anymore? I'm not playing at Boston College anymore. 
I'm playing in the National Football League, a good moment, a bad moment where you're like, wow, this is, I got, I got knocked on my butt. Anything that you remember where you realized this is real? I think it's more, you know, obviously day one when you walk in, you know, you're just seeing Pat P, Larry Fitzgerald, Chandler Jones. That's definitely kind of like, okay, wow. And then, you know, you're playing with them and you're trying to figure stuff out with them on the field and you're, you know, you're trying to focus on it, but you're like, you know, you know, Pat P's telling me we got to do this or, you know, kind of stuff like that. And then, um, but I think definitely, you know, kind of playing wise, I mean, we, I had to go against Trent Williams, um, you know, twice this year. And, you know, I think he's the best tackle in football and he has been for a long time. So definitely going against him, you know, there were ups and downs, good times, but there were some bad times against him. So, um, but, you know, obviously, you know, being a competitor, you know, you want to go against the best in the world. And when you do well against them, you know, you definitely feel like, wow, like I could definitely play with anybody in this league. And then, you know, there's other times where he makes you look silly. So you got to definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> always keep an eye out on him. That's a lot of pressure. First game back to be against Trent Williams in his first game in a 49ers uniform. That is something special to see. And that was fun to see you go up against him. He's still kicking it at, what, 32, 33 years old. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the best in the world. You're going to have some of the best personalities in the NFL world. And I bet Arizona, you've got some stars out there with you. Who are some of the guys who are either well-known on your team or maybe not even well-known to the average NFL fan who are just personalities in that locker room who are always, you know, not only leaders, but just guys who can give a good laugh and break the tension, you know, guys who are really close teammates of yours? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have, you know, there's a bunch of stars on the team. But, you know, you talk about DeAndre Hopkins, JJ, Chandler Jones, all guys like that, Larry. But, um, you know, the th cool thing is just how close the team was this year. I think this year that made it a lot of fun. And luckily I think we're bringing back a lot of those guys that, you know, made it such a cohesive group was, you know, it definitely, you know, everybody got along with it. It wasn't, you know, clicky or anything like that, but – um, you know, we definitely do have some characters. Like I know just like, for example, Dennis Gardeck, um, you know, he, uh, he kind of got a little famous with the sack dance this year, um, hitting the strobe. Um, and you know, luckily, you know, he was probably the first friend I made on the team, uh, coming in. So seeing his success was awesome, but yeah, he's probably one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. So, um, we definitely got a good group. Um, I think that's pretty, once you get that, everything else becomes a lot easier. And then do you remember, and speaking of guys who are a little bit interesting and, you know, they, they gravitate some attention around them, your head coach, Coach Kingsbury, is a guy who, you know, had a big leap from year one to year two with the team success, but also people are talking about, you know, how he looks on draft day and just his overall personality and where he came from with Texas Tech. Tell me about your first impressions of Coach Kingsbury, who's a guy who is, you know, younger than most NFL head coaches and maybe a little bit more relatable to the players considering that he was in the league, you know, a decade ago compared to multiple decades ago before you were even alive. Yeah, I think he does a great job of, you know, relating with the players and, you know, kind of understanding where we're coming from and what we need. So, um, you know, it's, it's cool to see when you got guys coming from other teams coming in saying, you know, we got the best setup in the NFL and kind of the best schedule and the best, kind of the best everything. I think that's a big part to Coach Kingsbury and, and his staff and kind of how they set it up. So I know we're definitely very fortunate. Um, I mean, he's been awesome. You know, he's really is kind of like one of the guys just jokes around with us, everything like that. So, um, yeah, he, he's, he's been one of my favorite coaches that I've ever played for. And, you know, I'm definitely lucky to have him. And, I mean, definitely you see the team go from being the worst in the NFL to, you know, playoff you know kind of on the border team and exactly. few years uh is, is pretty impressive so um i'm definitely excited to see what we do this year now my last question probably the most important of the interview it's march you're a sports guy march madness zach you're busy you're an nfl player you're trying to get ready for an nfl season but did you fill out some brackets do you have any early predictions for us well i didn't predict the ohio state loss but uh no i definitely uh you know, just watching it, I feel like, you know, the Big Ten teams, they all kind of, you know, they show that that's kind of the, the creme de la creme now in the league. So I think, you know, I, I don't know why. I just Whenever I watch Illinois, I've got a good feeling. So I got them winning it so far. But, you know, I might be wrong. I hope, Hopefully not. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Maybe you have some money on the line. We'll see. Illinois, they've got the talent, a great dynamic duo. Now you guys have a big trio there in Arizona along that defensive front. A lot of great players there. And Zach. 
from a new Canaan kid who used to play football, wishing you the best of luck in your future. We know you've got a bright one. And just wishing you good luck on this year because I know you're probably excited to get back on the field in a little bit of a less crazier year and hopefully make a run with Arizona. I really appreciate you coming on. Yep, thank you for having me. All right, this is the last episode, or the latest episode, I hope it's not the last, of Zoomed In for the Rudin Report. Ian Nicholas joined by former New Canaan football star, now Arizona Cardinals star, Zach Allen. We'll see you next time.